Hey guys, I just wanted to uh, demonstrate the principle of inclusion and exclusion with you um, and kind of show you why that formula works. Uh, so what I have is a three-way uh, Venn diagram. I've got circle A here at the top, circle B here on the bottom left, and circle C here on the bottom right. So let's say that I wanted to try to count everything that shows up in at least one of these circles one time, just to see how many things are in uh, at least one of them. So uh, what I could do is I could start by counting everything in A one time. And so I'm gonna mark in every section uh, of the diagram that's in A, I'm gonna mark that with a one. So I'm gonna do the same things for, um, for B and for C. So if I count everything in B, um, now these things have, those have just been counted the first time, but then these right here have now been counted two times. Uh, we could try to take care of that right now, but we'll worry about that uh, in just a minute. So uh, those things have been counted twice. These things are still good at one time. And let's do the same thing for uh, C. So uh, let's see here. This thing in C has been counted once, but then these two things have now been counted twice by virtue of being in A and C and B and C. And then um, the stuff in the middle, of course, it's now been counted three times. Uh, so notice that I am, I'm going to clean this up just a bit, uh, but some things are good. Uh, the things out here and this one, those have all been counted once. But then I've, I've double and triple counted um, certain things depending on where they are in the diagram. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to back off of these a little bit. I'm going to subtract away some counts. Remember that I want to count everything one time. So my goal is to have a one in every section. Um, so I'll start by subtracting away one time everything that shows up in both A and B. So we're looking for the overlap. Uh, for those. So, of course, that's going to bring this down to a 1, and that's going to bring this down to a 2. And then I'm going to do the same thing for A and C. So let's subtract away uh, 1 on each one of those. Now, of course, they're both 2s, so that's going to take both of those to a 1. And then let's subtract, and, and actually before we do that, notice everything's good except for this right here. This is still a two. So I'm gonna subtract away everything that is in uh, both B and C. I haven't done that yet. So if I do that, it does get that one to a one, but it now takes this one to a zero. So uh, basically if I could just recount everything right here, then I'd be good. So in other words, I'm going to add back a count for things that are in all three, because this center piece um, is what's in all three. So notice now I have a one in every single thing, and so therefore um, what I have is uh, the count that I was looking for. So let's summarize what it is that we did to get this count. So we counted the number of things we're going to use our notation in being the function that says how many outcomes are in each set. So I counted each thing individually once, but then I subtracted away all the two-way intersections once. So uh, A intersected with B, A intersected with C, and B intersected with C. And remember, at that point, it got me ones everywhere, except that it also got me a zero in the middle. Um, so therefore, what I did was I added back uh, the intersection in all three of them. And so this highlights the, um, the, uh, fun the principle of inclusion-exclusion uh, for a three-way set. We've counted each thing in one set once, then we subtract away the things that are in uh, the two-way intersections once, and then we add back uh, the thing for the three-way intersection. So I am going to uh, demonstrate this also on a four-way Venn diagram uh, and hopefully convince you that uh, the uh, principle of inclusion-exclusion works. So.